Good day, everyone. I am Jean Feigel, a graduate of Telasol University, and I'm here to present our paper, Impacts of Working Capital Management on the Profitability of Manufacturing Companies. Companies have been utilizing working capital management in their operations to identify the sufficient working capital they need in order to strive for a balance in financial trade-offs. For companies to be deemed as profitable, they must be able to maximize their shareholders' wealth, have capacity to elevate risk, and generate high margins. They should also avoid pursuing uneconomic investment options in a quest to maintain high investment turnovers. The study seeks to determine the effects of working capital, firm-specific, and economic indicators on net profit margin, return on assets, and economic value added of construction materials manufacturing companies, and evaluate if there is comparison in the effect of working capital, firm-specific, and economic indicators on the profitability between developed and emerging markets. Our study employed a panel data regression to describe how working capital, firm-specific, and economic indicators impact the profitability of construction materials manufacturing companies in the Asia-Pacific region from 2015 to 2019. Both fixed and random effect models were used based on the result of Hausman tests. The sample includes top five companies per country based on total assets, where in Singapore, Japan, Australia, and Hong Kong represented the developed markets, while Philippines, Indonesia, Taiwan, and South Korea constituted the sample for emerging markets. For the developed markets, the results showed that an increase in receivable turnover, debt ratio, and sales growth has a positive influence on net profit margin with fixed effect model while the firm size has a negative effect. Firm size has a negative relationship with net profit margin is evident in the study of Kauser et al, where it was argued that when a firm is small, it grows faster and has a little opportunity to improve further. On the other hand, current ratio, firm size, and sales growth has a positive relationship on return on assets and so was cash and short-term investments with economic value added when the random effect model was utilized. Dow et al. stated that the reason why big firms have positive return on assets is because bigger companies have better access to both internal and external financing to invest in other business opportunities and generate higher sales. For the emerging markets, a positive impact between firm size and net profit margin, current ratio and ROA were seen with the random effect model, while the GDP growth and current ratio has a contradicting effect to EVA with fixed effect model. It can be noticed that one unit change in GDP growth will lead to a significant negative change of economic value added. This negative influence of GDP growth to economic value added was supported by the study of Y. Zosaman et al. in which it stated that an increasing GDP of a country might cause a rise in inflation, which may result in the decrease of their net operating margin. To conclude, the dependent variables do truly have varying effects on net profit margin, return on assets, and economic value added as profitability measures of our sample. Second, the construction materials manufacturing companies in developed markets have more factors of profitability to consider as compared to those in emerging markets. Developed markets have a more competitive business environment as compared to emerging. On one hand, the companies in emerging markets have lower access to information and greater opportunities are limited only to big cities that lead to fewer determinants of profitability. That ends our presentation. Thank you everyone for listening. For questions and clarification, you can reach us through our email as can be seen in the screen. Thank you and have a nice day.